Hello guys, today we are checking out an app that I'm sure many of you will be interested in. I will also clarify some drama around it, because I've been Detective Steve to make sure I'm not bringing you anything unethical. I want to show you how you can also optimize your favorite games so they are the best they can possibly be on your Quest headset. Whether that be better frame rates, battery saving, or visual boosts. You could even change your capture bitrate and your resolution of your video recording without having to plug the headset into a computer every single time you want to change it. This method of optimizing your games and changing the capture rate is the simplest that I have come across and it's all within a single application that will be on your headset costing only around $4 which is about £3, an absolute bargain. So what is it? What am I talking about? So this is called the Quest Game Optimizer. It is from Anagan79 who is also a journalist for a French magazine called Gamergen. So this application is a tool that will sit on your headset and provide you with capabilities to adjust app resolution on a per game basis. Also CPU limitations, GPU limitations, fixed foveated rendering strength adjustments and frame rates. This means you can make the game the smoothest experience, one with more visual clarity perhaps better looking textures, longer battery life so you can enjoy more gameplay, or even better peripheral views if you're increasing the fixed foveated rendering. There is over 190 profiles already available in the cloud for games like Green Hell, Zenith, and Guerrilla Tag. Because this app doesn't just have to apply to the official store games either. The profiles have been vetted and tested to ensure that they are stable and are reliable when you're playing your titles. So you shouldn't run into the problem where you will use a profile and the game runs like absolute crap. So let me show you what the app is all about and how to install it. So to install this application, you want to go to itch.io and look up Quest Games Optimizer. It'll be this one here that looks like a guy with spiky hair with a VR headset on. And you just want to click on that. You'll then be able to buy now for $4. And once you've bought it, you'll be able to see it in your library and you can click download. In the download menu, it'll have some instructions on how to actually run the application. But I will show you what to do in this video, so don't worry about that you want to download the installer and instructions. If you're not running on Windows, you can download the Quest Game Optimizer and drag and drop into SideQuest, but the easiest way is to download this one, installer and instructions. So click download. So if you go to the location where the files would have been downloaded and right click the zip file and extract, you will see the installer and instructions windows folder. Click in there, click in there, and you'll then have the APK for the optimizer available, a readme file, an installation bat file, an ADB Wi-Fi connection bat file, and ADB, so you don't have to download that in order to run Android commands to install the application and run other commands in order to enable some features. So all you want to do here with your Quest connected to the computer is double click installation. It will pop up a command prompt. And there it would have just installed the APK. Something that's important here now is that you want to run the ADB Wi-Fi connection. What this does is it enables the ADB commands to be executed on the Quest headset via a Wi-Fi connection. SideQuest does this, this isn't anything out of the ordinary, because what this app will do is it will send a API request with an ADB command inside of it that will adjust your Quest settings to optimize it for a certain game. It also enables you to change the aspect ratio and the bitrate of your video capture if you want to record something whilst you're playing. So just double click that one as well. Unfortunately, just like with SideQuest or any app in the Oculus ecosystem, once you restart your headset, you will have to plug it into the computer and run this command again to enable the features. But that's only if you do a proper restart. If it's on standby, it's perfectly fine. So that's it. We can go put the Quest headset on and let me show you the app. So in the Oculus Home, you want to go to the, uh, the menu, click this in the top right corner and change it to unknown sources. Here you'll see the Quest Games Optimizer. So you can just click that and open it. So when you boot the game up, you'll actually, let me turn, you'll see this as a pop-up, accessibility permissions, which actually, let me talk about that first because 
there's some drama. Okay, before I go on to show you some stats and some gameplay comparisons and how to actually use the application, some of you may be aware of the drama around this app and I want to go over some and explain why there's drama and the two different ways that you can use this app depending on how you want to approach it. So this app was actually initially shadow banned from SideQuest, so you couldn't install it via the app. And this was due to the fact that there was an accessibility problem, which means that you have to give the app certain permissions so it can apply and remove profiles on the fly all through the Oculus app menu or Pi Launcher, depending on what you're using, to make the experience completely seamless. But this means the app needed permissions, and these permissions also give access to things you may not want to give access to. <laughs> The installation of this app is no longer banned through SideQuest. You can drag and drop and install it now because there is an option where you don't have to have this seamless experience. It's a bit more manual. So there is an option where the accessibility can be turned off and it is off by default, by the way. But what this means is, is you'll have to start the game that you want to play optimized through the Quest Game Optimized Launcher. If you want to apply optimized profiles, it has to be done via the launcher. It won't just boot up automatically and apply the profile that is available unless you give it those permissions. It also means that when you close an app down, because the app can't determine whether or not something is running anymore, that profile will persist, so you have to manually turn it off as well. SideQuest did want to look at the source code and suggested making it open source, but the developer refused with skepticism. I understand how both parties were skeptic about showing the code base because that means SideQuest can potentially steal some secrets that he may have had. It also means SideQuest had to take the approach of being super cautious because they didn't know what they were going to be letting us in for. But Basti564, the developer who created Quest Launcher, Oculus, constantly finds leaks in the firmware and presents them to us on our socials. He has vetted and reviewed the code base and has given it the all clear and the thumbs up. So feel free to enable the accessibility option if you trust that. But there is the manual option as well, just in case, just if you want to be safe. So let's check out uh, how this runs and I'll show you the accessibility option in action. So depending on what you want, if you click yes, it will take you to the accessibility settings anyway. Um, and you can change here the downloaded services. This is where you're going to allow the game those permissions uh, and it can determine whether or not an app is running or if it's not and it will automatically apply the profiles. But as I said, if you're a bit cautious and you don't want to do that, you can simply just turn it off and press stop. Well, I'm going to leave it on for this example. Let me just, so let me just go back and show you the application. So this is the screen, this is the menu here, it's enough better clawless, so you can just flick through. It only shows applications of which you have data upon your headset. So it doesn't have every single game here, it's only got ones that I have available to play. So we're currently in basic mode, which means that I would just simply look for a game. If a game has this little cloud icon on it, and I click this, the game will open using the cloud profile. Simple as that. But if I go to the advanced mode, and then I select a game that I want to edit, let's choose, choose Beat Saber. I'll have this here that I can adjust. It shows you what the cloud profile is available to, for me to download and use, which is the resolution that's been set, the CPU usage, the GPU usage, the foveated rendering, and the frames per second that they've called Hertz. But I could also create my own profile where like, I can adjust the resolution I want the game to be, so I can max it out. But of course, there's going to have to be some leeway on uh, some of the other settings like like the frame rate, I can't run Beat Saber at 120 probably at this resolution, but you can set that to auto. Perhaps I want CPU high, GPU high, and the foveated rendering off. Then all I would need to do is to start the game is click the Beat Saber icon, and it will boot up the game under these settings. Or if you believe that you have a setting here that is better than what is available on the cloud, you can send to developer and click send, because then they will review it because they have to make sure that it is reliable, it can run smoothly before it becomes the one that is available on the cloud for everyone to choose. And if you forget what it initially was before coming here and messing with the settings, you can just click reset profile and it'll put it back to whatever the default was. In the top right corner, you'll see a few icons. Click the hands. It's everyone that's involved with making this possible. There's a GamerGen, the French magazine, uh, some of the developers, some YouTube channels. Uh, the developer is French, so there's lots of fr lots of French channels here. But if you want to give them a thanks, all the names are there. There's also this list button. If you click that, it shows all of the optimized apps that are available on the cloud. They could just be automatically applied by you booting up the game or closing it. And if I click the camera icon, I can change 
the resolution, and the frame rate that I want to capture the game at. So this is incredibly useful. You don't have to plug it into Quest uh, and then make the adjustment and then restart the headset to change it again. It can all be done on the fly via this application. I should note though, if you've got accessibility turned off, okay, accessibility is turned off. As you can see, the red man in the top right corner. When you boot up a game, you have to boot it up through this app because it cannot see whether or not the game is being booted up and then add the profile. And then once the game's closed down, it can then remove it. The, the profile will persist and you have to boot the game from here. So you have to make sure that once the, you've closed the game down that you get rid of the profile. And once you boot up a game, you boot it via the Quest Games Optimizer. Otherwise you won't get any of these benefits. So I've got it on, I'm gonna boot up a game and you'll see the pop-up to show you that the profile has been applied. So I'll click, uh, let's Crisis Brigade 2, let me choose that. Let's do the, uh, let's copy the cloud profile and let's boot up the game. You may not, oh, you can't see it, it's gone yellow, but there was actually a pop-up at the bottom of my screen showing me the resolution the game's going to boot up at, the frame rate, and also the threshold of the other parameters. <laughs> So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Coming to check out the Quest Game Optimizer, meaning you can play your Quest games in the best way possible, getting all that juice that you can out of your Quest headset. I'll link the app down below in the description. Please comment your thoughts on it as well. And hopefully you enjoy, guys. Have a great week. Consider subscribing. Happy gaming. Good day.